Hello everyone, it is Joe here from Omnipoke, the channel that brings you guys everything Pokemon. If you're looking for PTCGO codes, including the stuff from Fusion Strike, make sure you go ahead and check out the Town store. You can get a 5% discount on your order using that code Omnipoke. For today's video, I am going to be going over my tweaks to the Fusion Strike decks in the format. The format's gone in a way that I predicted like relatively closely. I think a few things here and there. Gengar's had a slightly worse footing than I was expecting, uh, so Leafeon is still certainly a relevant deck in the game and one of the top performers right now. Um, and there's just been a ton of fan of waves coming into decks, uh, so a lot of my sort of knee-jerk at the moment is playing a ton of basic energy in my lists, uh, because I think it's just so obvious that a lot of decks need to play a fan of waves. I think a lot of Inteleon decks need to play it against Mew, uh, because getting rid of Fusion Strike energy can get you back in range in terms of math fixing, uh, so you can actually ping them again. Uh, but also, it has upside against a few other matchups. It's still very good into single strike. It forces extra hound hours into play, basically, and extra hound dooms on turn two, so they have to draw pretty well uh, to actually attack into you. Um, and it's good against a handful of other decks, like Dragapult, Sylveon, those sorts of things. So um, I think it's been the Fan of Waves show in these opening weeks, and it's becoming so obvious that like Mew's playing it even for Mirror right now and a ton of other stuff. So my knee-jerk is going to basic energies a lot of the time. So let's have a look at the latest Mew build. And you can see that Capture Energy has had to go. Uh, I think Fusion Strike Energy is still too powerful to not play, um, because, like I said, it is what's blocking Inteleon ping damage in all the Inteleon matchups. Um, and it blocks an Umbreon from gusting you on turn two, which buys you a lot of percentage points in the single strike matchup, especially when you're the player going second. Uh, and of course, we are playing a lesser sparkle to burst these into play for acceleration. So it's capture energy that's had to uh, make way here. So we are up to four Fog Crystal and we are up to five uh, basic psychic. I think I'd probably go down as low as four. And I've thought about a few different ways I could try and offset this. Uh, by simply going heavier on the VIP pass, Chromomatic Train is one option. Uh, but really, I just like having the Double Stormy Mountains as my two-off stadium, the maximum copies of Fog Crystal and Quick Ball. I think these are like pretty safe. And ultimately, Mew is a low-maintenance deck in the opening stages, so you don't need to be popping off and going wide quickly. It's really in the mid-game and where you want to be having those like Genesect pushes and Peony pushing for like big plays here and there. So I don't mind not being crazy. And Capture is a small loss, obviously, consistency-wise. Um, but it's such a liability right now with so much fan uh, that I'm just not playing them right now. And it's it just feels better to me uh, overall. Uh, we are playing Rotom Phone. This has sort of come in place of Kramamatic recently. And I do think it's pretty valid. Uh, it's really nice, actually, I find, with Cross Switcher quite a lot. And a lot of people complained about Cross Switcher, where so often one gets trapped in a hand and you can't do the stuff you want with your hand. But the Rotom Phone does help that out a lot. Makes them a lot more live and not entirely reliant on Peony, which I think is really cool. Uh, so Rotom Phones have been nice. I'm only playing two right now. You can try and work in spaces for more copies of these. If you're not a particular fan of Amani, which I still am personally, uh, that's okay. Uh, Vit Band is coming in as well, just for even more potential uh, math fixing. It can really be helpful in a ton of different situations. Uh, obviously good in mirror matches where 310 is the number to hit a lot of the time. So um, it's, you know, one less power tablet for you. Obviously Oracorio could be another mirror style tech card, but I still prefer double Latte. I think it's just so good. And when I'm not playing Capture Energy, I want to have the double Stormy to allow me to access Latias when I need to, to go wide early when I am making Genesect pushes. Uh, so that's why we're uh, with this Pokemon count right now. Ultimately, uh, Mew is starting to become more streamlined, but I do think the variation right now should be the energy counts uh, because everyone is knee-jerking Fan of Waves as like the best way to answer Mew. Um, so uh, go to basic energy and make them flip coins of Crushing Hammers instead <laughs> is basically uh, going to be my plan. Let's have a look at what I think is the number two deck. Uh, we are going in a slight order, I guess. So you could call this my like top eight decks as well. Uh, and we're looking at uh, Single Strike next. So Single Strike is certainly interesting. Uh, the new include recently has been uh, VIP Pass. And I think there's always been this like two count of ball search cards that's been like level balls, great balls, a couple of the cards here and there that the deck has sometimes played. It's never really felt great. 
And VIP Pass sort of takes that slot where it still doesn't feel great, but in the openings, it can give you a lot of pop-off potential. And I think that's just very good to power spike you through in a lot of matchups. I've seen as high as four counts in lists. At the moment, I'm only playing three because I don't really value it above any other card. I know a lot of people cut the basic fighting uh, here and there as well. If you just want to go down to eight energy, that's okay just to get yourself the extra uh, VIP access. But I still like manual attach uh, attachments and that sort of thing. In mid-game, when you're like Marnieing, you want to have slightly better odds of getting these sorts of things. And it just gives you extra fighting cost for one blow and early uh, impact blows. So I personally like the knife energy. It's up to you, really, if you want to make that a full VIP pass. Obviously dead from every turn beyond turn one. Uh, but at the very least, you have like Crobat, you have Tower in the opening turn as well, even if you're not playing a supporter. So you have a bit of dig potential to hit these VIP passes. So right now I'm at three copies, and I do love just going straight away, double Hound Hour established, or Hound Hour plus Attacker, get an attachment on your Attacker, that sort of thing. It is a good feeling, uh, and the deck is obviously a setup-based deck, so the most important turns are turns one and two, and VIP Pass certainly helps in that regard. And yes, they're dead in the late game, but you're research digging a lot of the time with the deck regardless, so it doesn't have too much anti-synergy. Obviously, the, the fact that you like draw into it and it looks terrible because it's an unplayable card, but there's actually a ton of unplayable cards in the deck, like urns sit in the hand, that sort of thing, until they are that activation and they become critical. So, um, yeah, I think VIP Pass is a decent way to go with the deck, and it does give you just more high roll potential uh, with one of the strongest decks when it does get set up. So, yeah, I like the, the intention here. And obviously this deck can't play a higher basic energy count. Like I said, you'll win more games even if a capture energy gets fan of waved just because you got Hound Hour into play because the single strike energies are just like super important regardless. So you play into fan with this list. It's just a thing that you have to put up with basically. Um, but yeah, I like the deck in general. The type coverage that it boasts is still really good. The one hit KO potential, the wall breaking potential, the dual type coverage. Yeah, it, it's all there. The gusting is still really good. So those are easily, I think, the top two decks in the game. I think for me, my number three deck is either Suicune Ludicolo or Ice Rider. Let's have a quick look at my Suicune Ludicolo. Um, because I've been hot and cold with this deck in the past. I was pretty cold on the deck in the Evolving Skies format because I just thought that it didn't get set up enough because there was just too much bench control with Urshifu, Dragger, and Jolteon. And all of those decks are not the top two decks in the game right now. And it does open the door for Suicune. Uh, a combo-based build of Suicune feel a lot stronger. Um, so I'm pretty happy with the, where the list is at right now. Uh, Fan of Waves has come into this build. Uh, like I said, in Teleon decks, even if people go towards basic energy builds, you still need to play Fan of Waves just to deal with Fusion Strike energy. So you can still ping stuff and get them into range. Because Mew actually can be fairly efficient and low to the ground and doesn't have to go wide with the Genesect if they don't have to. Uh, so, or if they don't want to, I should say. So they can just be bundling into you for the two tens. And I'm only playing one cape, so you could try and force them to go wider by having multiple capes and maybe some like annoying stadiums and that sort of stuff. But I don't really like that idea when, especially there's like Vit Band, Cemetery, and the Ford Power Tablets. I think they get through capes anyway, like pretty easily. And it's not a big issue for them. So at the moment, I'm at one cape. I think it's okay in Mirror and it's okay in the single strike matchup, but I don't think it's great against a lot of other things. So I'm not like massively committed to this. So I don't mind that being a cut right now uh, in favor of that fan because I think it's solid. I like three candy as well. Gets you earlier pings, gets you random high rolls into Ludicolo that little bit more often and just sort of nets you the two enthusiastic dances throughout the game a lot more reliably. Uh, with the double net and the three candy. So I, I kind of like where I'm at with the uh, with the Suicune list right now. And I don't mind, again, worrying about Fan of Waves in a deck where you expect your Suicune to get knocked out most turns. Because uh, we're just a racing deck, right? We just want to be uh, bundling into anything in the active and setting off our next Suicune the following turn with Melanie and Raihan. So we don't mind a fan necessarily because we're expecting, uh, expecting to get knocked out more often than not. So... Um, and because we have so many buckets, you can play around fan that little bit better anyway by just having, if ever you have extra attachments, like your third attachment on the board, it can always be a water energy if you need it to be, right? So you can uh, have your active with two energy, one of them being a capture, for example, expecting that to get KO'd. And then you always have one on the bench. So even if they gust you and fan you, you still have one energy remaining. So in general, I think you cover yourself naturally uh, by playing the Suicune Lud Ludicolo build. And then Ice Rider is naturally not worried about um, fan just by playing basic energy itself. We're playing double fan <laughs> because it's still really good in the meta. And like I said, it can really be important against Mew. 
so he can quick shooting them down and get them in range of a max lance. In a similar vein, we are playing the Leon in here uh, for extra damage modification. Uh, but really the biggest upside I find of Ice Rider right now, and, and something I'm loving with the deck, and I'm surprised more people haven't got on this train yet, Cross Switcher is cracked in the deck. It really gives it an extra dimension, a lot more aggression, uh, and I think it's really, really good. And there's space in the deck as well, just about to make it work. That was the main thing I was skeptical of, if there was space to actually make this play. Uh, and I think there is. Uh, so I love the turn to aggression this deck can boast. Um, and I just love having Cross Switcher as burst option, so you can still Melanie attach Cross Switcher people. And it just gives the deck a whole new dimension that you couldn't play around with before. So you become a much more flexible deck, uh, which I think is really quality. And I think we shall, will be seeing more Ice Rider sort of shining through. I think it's very good in the meta right now. There's not many easy counters to it either. So I think it's just solid, uh, to be honest with you. So yeah, I'm a big fan of this. Um, I do think it struggles with the Ludicolo matchup, but I think it's really decent into single strike. I think it's favored into single strike. And I think it's okay against Mew with the tech cards of the Leon, the double fan. Um, so yeah, that's just my personal opinion. And you can also just go aggressively cross, uh, cross switching around Muse when you have to, that sort of thing. And just try and do the two, two, two approach, um, prize wise in a race. So I think that's pretty decent. Um, next up. So we've gone through my top five, I guess you could say, um, oh, sorry, my top four decks. In at number five, I would probably put Melanie Urshifu. I think it's kind of wacky liking a deck this much, even though it's pretty bad into the Mew matchup. And I'm not teching heavily for Mew necessarily in this list. I'm not playing Fan in here, which I think is like the go-to tech card for Mew in general, a lot of people are finding. Uh, and you can find space for it if you really want to. But right now I'm playing like a just a very bog standard Urshifu, I guess you could say. Um, but I think this is good against everything that isn't Mew, and that still is a large portion of the meta. So I think Urshifu's like a brave play, but if the tipping point becomes there's more single strike than there is Mew, it becomes a very intelligent play. So pick your moment to play uh, Urshifu. It hasn't changed much for me. Again, um, I think the biggest knee jerk in the meta right now is just fan of waves, and you just have to play your rapid strike energies more intelligently. Uh, essentially play them down when you're rapid flowing, right? Play them down when you get value out of them. Don't just jam them in the early turns, but that's absolutely fine for the deck. You're expecting to burst three energy every single turn. That's how it plays in general. Uh, and yeah, I think it's it's solid into most other matchups. So uh, everything but Mew, I think you're very solid against. Because I also expect Dragapult to be on the decline. I know it's only really dropped to like that sort of mid-tier. You can still probably call it tier two right now, but I think Dragger is on a course downhill. Like it's spiraling because it can't handle the heat of all the dark decks that are trying to target Mew. Uh, it can't handle the fan of waves either. <laughs> so uh, all the strengths of Dragapult are getting target. Well, like all the weaknesses are getting targeted uh, for Drago, which makes me think it's it's very, very poor right now. Um, let's talk about uh, Leafeon. I think because Gengar is currently losing the single strike fight and the more single strike there is, the less likely Gengar will be the way to play single strike, if that makes sense, because single strike Urshifu is good into the Gengar matchup because Gengar's weak to fighting. So... Um, I think it's very likely that we'll still continue to see Gengar play second fiddle uh, for the most part, uh, which means Leafeon, <laughs> going around about it here, which means Leafeon is safe in the meta and at least can target one of the two best decks in the game. And uh, you're trying to offset the weak Mew matchup with the double fan, like you're seeing in all sorts of builds. Uh, but here, I'm just making the statement. I'm just playing basic grass. <laughs> because, um, you, because Mew even plays Fan of Waves now, uh, and you want to be using Max Leaf a little bit more often against that Mew, so you can be threatening the two shot, uh, you can't really afford to lose an energy attachment uh, in, in that matchup. So uh, with the full basic energy list and the Raihan, you can try and just chain Max Leaf two hit KOs against them. Um, you can also see that I'm gonna I'm um, up to three bosses orders and the rope. Um, so on those turns where they are trying to hit you, like set up damage with Latias, for example, you can just be pushing to the back and just trying to KO Genesex. You can very easily try and go for the triple two prize KO in this matchup as well, um, because the Genesex has the naturally high free retreat and you have the Gallimine sort of thing. So uh, you don't even care about the resistance because you're still one shotting them with that Grass Knot. So uh, yeah, I think the push them to the back constantly game plan is one of the better ones against Mew, especially if you can slow them down on early attachments with Fan and force the sparkle because sometimes it's just not in their hand sort of thing. 
Um, so yeah, it's a real shame that you don't get to play Capture Energy because it feels really, really bad when you're Lone Sol, uh, especially because I'm not playing uh, Keep Calling. Um, and you could go towards Keep Calling now that I'm not playing Capture, I guess, in theory. Uh, so you're not just like dead more often, I guess. Um, but I think in general, you just sort of bank on the eight outs and try and get the greening cells going. If you want to min-max, you can go to like two capture, seven grass, and just say that uh, against non-fan decks, you're happy to see the captures sort of thing. But right now I'm just saying, I'm so done with cap with fan being like such a good card in the game uh, that I'm just tilting the other way and making them just be dead cards in my opponent's deck, essentially. Uh, so then it's down to uh, Sylveon Box and Jolteon. I'm going to go for Sylveon Box. Uh, I just like that it represents so many type coverages right now. Um, it seems very, very solid into a lot of matchups. You're not super concerned about anything in particular. Um, you obviously have the, the psychic type coverage for the Urshifus. You have the fighting type coverage um, into Jolteon, which is nice. Um, and Gengar, I guess you could say. And just the sniping pressure in general of Urshifu is always really nice for mopping up after Max Harmony and other damage that you've tried to put in play. You've got the Moltres from Mew and Dragger. You've got the Blaziken, which is good against uh, Zacian and uh, Genesect as well, even. Because we are, again, playing double rope, three boss. So we have the Max Blaze, like, highly aggressive damage output into that matchup as well. Uh, just try and push them back all the time, which is always cool. Uh, Riven Badge is just a good upside as well for Sylveon in general. So I like, like I said, that you are a type coverage box. And I think it's probably the best type coverage box. I was trying to build a, like, Raihan box with a ton of uh, just two prize type coverages. But I realized that I was, like, just building a, a worse Sylveon. So I've gone back uh, to just accepting that Sylveon's pretty okay here. Um, you are weak to fan, which is not great, but uh, at the very least you have one energy attackers from Blaziken and Gale Thrust when you have to, and uh, Moltres is self-accelerating, so as annoying as it, is, as it is, you can still survive uh, without that sort of, well, without just crumbling to it, basically, so yeah. Uh, a very, well, a relatively straightforward Sylveon, because all the interest comes in the form of the, uh, the Pokemon, I guess you could say. And then the last list is going to be the the gimmicky Dream Ball Dust Noir combo. For those of you who don't know, you try and uh, put the uh, the Dream Ball into your prize cards with uh, Peonia. Then you access the Dream Ball when you take prizes and you get Dust Noir out of the deck to shut off uh, special energy cards. Um that does include your own, um, but the idea is this is your win con against single strike because they play so few basic energy and in some cases zero basic energy, uh, they just can't attack you anymore. <laughs> so you're trying to pivot one of your worst matchups with a bit of a gimmick, but it can sometimes pay off. It also allows you against the fusion strike matchup. Obviously, it turns off their um, effect of the fusion strike, right? So they uh, can no longer... Well, you can now ping them down, which is the idea, right? So you can actually set up your snipes with the Thunder Rumble. So good into a couple big matchups. It means that you're not playing captures yourself and you're just playing three basic uh, lightning. But obviously you get all the time in the world as soon as you establish this against single strike. So that's kind of the idea here. And speed lightning is too good to pass up on. Uh, so we're still going to be playing those. Um, we're playing a couple path just so you can get through like Zama's enters and that sort of thing. And it still has good combo potential when you're combining it with Amani, of course. So there are still times where you just jam the Amani, play the path, hit them with the Thunder Rumble, and Mew sometimes doesn't have the instant response in hand. Especially because I have seen a lot of Mews going down to three stadiums, which I don't really agree with right now. It leaves them vulnerable. Um, but yeah, not too much to say. I think Jolteon's done well recently with this little package. Uh, so it's something that I've picked up on. I think it's probably just about worth it right now, even though it is gimmicky. Um, but yeah, I, I'm still sort of... I don't like leaning into a three-card package like this, especially because you have to have not drawn the Dust Noir by the time you've established it all. Uh, so <laughs> there's risks to it, and it's not easy to uh, make sure it's all online, that sort of thing. And you still need to be taking prizes by the like before you've lost, I guess, uh, which is like possible, obviously. But not like super easy, especially because single strike pressurizes your VMAXs very quickly. Uh, so you are on the clock to get this rolling. But uh, I do think it's reasonable. And I think 
Jolteon doesn't have the worst. I mean, obviously, this is the best answer to the Suicune decks, right? Which I think are otherwise fairly unchecked. Uh, and also good against some random like one prize stuff that's popping up. And I think it's still good to have bench spread pressure in the game. Uh, I think it just helps you beat a lot of random stuff. And you have inbuilt consistency with the Intel engine and Speed Lightning. So uh, a lot of good draw here that uh, people are sort of uh, drawn towards still playing Jolteon. And I think this has much more survivability than Dragger, actually. I think Dragger should be on a downhill trajectory. And I think Jolteon should be like just fine. Um but you are having to play this little <laughs> the gimmick <laughs> to make you survive. And obviously this uh, also wins the Rapid Strike Urshi, I should say, as well. Obviously, because they have only water energy to attack with, so they can't do anything. So uh, you actually try and get this out in the majority of top-tier matchups. <laughs> so, and you just hope that Jolteon is good enough uh, against the Suicune stuff. So randomly covers you against pretty much everything uh, on the slide, as long as you can get it into play uh, in time and take those prizes. So um yeah let me know what you guys think are you still adding fans into your deck or are you getting annoyed by fan um are you moving towards basic energy or are you sticking to it right now let me know what deck you're liking the most from the format i still believe mew has what it takes to be the best deck uh no matter what and i think a small adjustment to a heavier basic energy focus uh will serve the deck well and will probably keep it at the top even though there is a ton of dark out there uh, it still feels like if you go first, you can still beat them quite a lot unless they have the crazy like VIP pass plus quick ball plus crowbat wombo early turns, uh, which is more of a thing now, I guess, that people have discovered the VIP pass in more than just this deck and they're playing it in other things uh, for that high roll potential. Uh, so I'd like to hear your thoughts. Let me know down below. This has been my top tier tweaks right now after a couple of weeks uh, of the format. I think this weekend, myself and Jack will be looking at the first results talking about lists and that sort of thing but i did just want to give you guys a nice update and uh i also am uploading uh, my lists to pokemoncard.io every week now as well i'm trying to update them weekly sometimes i'm updating them like randomly on certain days just after i've tested more of these sorts of decks so i'm still getting through them really and trying to give them all a good amount of time and testing uh, the majority of my testing has been with Mew and Single Strike, just because I think they're the strongest decks. Uh, but I also have been putting a ton of time into Ice Rider. I really am happy with the cross switches. So, yeah, that's uh, where my thoughts are right now, personally. But let me know, and I'll see you in another video tomorrow. Cheers.